Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is your host, Guillermo Sabatier, Director of International Services for HSI. And today on Perspectives on Energy, uh, joining us is our guest and my friend, Dr. Rudy Everwine, uh, MD. He is a specialist in functional medicine and also the founder of Medical Health Institute. So Rudy, welcome to the show. And uh, Great. Thank you, Guillermo. I've been so looking forward to this. Me. So excited to be here. Me too. Me too. And you know, at Today, one of the things we want to talk about is, and, and something you specialize in really is, is optimized health, optimized hormonal balance, and how that affects, improves performance. And, and I thought, you know, in my particular industry, right, we have a lot of issues with, uh, with error and we're trying to work really hard towards error prevention. And there was an interesting nexus here with uh, the, the intersection of, of, of your, your science and our science and how that can definitely improve the workforce, right, in that, in that regard. So tell me more about your practice and what you're doing. Why'd you get into this? Definitely. So I'm going to kind of start from the beginning of mm -hmm. uh, how I got into this functional medicine practice. So I was traditionally trained. I know first our audience is a non-clinical audience. So I have to really kind of be with sure, my terms. Sure, so sure. let me know if there's something I need to elaborate on. Right. So I got my clinical training in internal medicine. I worked in an acute hospital in Miami for 10 years where I was what they call a hospitalist. I was admitting patients to the hospital with acute diseases. So Western medicine was really good at treating disease, but not good at preventing disease. So I was lucky I was able to go from the uh, acute medicine and I started a weight loss uh, clinic and hormone clinic where I really um, focused on root cause analysis why are people so sick and what can I do to help them with better nutrition and hormone balance? And I've been getting amazing results with my patients. Mm -hmm. And this is a new branch of medicine called functional medicine, mm -hmm. where we look deeper into what's happening with our patients. And we're not just here to treat disease, we're here to prevent disease and help our patients live an optimized life. Okay. Well, well, that's okay. So thank you for that. That's actually leads us to our next question, right? So tell me more about the specifics when it comes to like hormone balancing, thyroid health, and, and, and the therapies associated with that and how that improves performance and moves. Definitely. And you know, we, we've had a lot of talks about this, Guillermo. And I know in your industry, in your industry, what you told me is that most errors that happen happen because of human error. So right. how do we prevent human error? So when you think about it, how is our healthcare system built? We're built that we go and see our primary care doctor. Uh, we go maybe once a year, we do some basic labs. And most of the times you get pretty good. You're doing pretty well. Maybe your cholesterol is high. Try to lose some weight, see you next year, right? So a lot of times patients are like, but doc, I'm not the same. I don't feel great. Right. Traditional medicine doesn't have a great answer into helping patients thrive into living an optimized life. So that's where I'm going to go into first the definition of hormones. So the okay. human body is a very complex, complex system. So the way our bodies tell our organs what to do is by secreting what we call hormones. Mm -hmm. Hormones are chemical mes messengers that are secreted by our glands, different glands, and I'll go over a few of them, and go into specific tissues and stimulate them into action. Let me give you a few examples of hormones. For example, insulin, one of the most important hormones in our body, secreted by our pancreas and helps with regulation of our blood sugar. Thyroid hormones, secreted by the thyroid gland, regulates our body temperature and metabolism. Testosterone, one of the main hormones for both males and females for reproduction and overall growth and well being. So, the way that complex interaction of um, target, organ and hormone plays, it is very, very well controlled and it is really an exact science. So the way our hormones work, even a deviation of 0.1% mm -hmm. will have dire consequences in the organism. Wow. So now what has been happening in our toxic world, unfortunately, is that the production of all the plastics, the pesticides, mm -hmm. and particularly in your industry, mm -hmm. polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, TBs. all of those um, toxins are what they call endocrine disruptors. Okay. What they do, they mimic a lot of our natural hormones and they come and wreak havoc on our tightly regulated hormonal system. So just think about it. If you're at your house, you have mm -hmm. your thermostat that is put to one temperature. And then mm -hmm. you come in, you mess up with the thermostat. <laughs> Everything goes haywire. And right. we have to remember, 
our hormones dictate who we are. Okay. Our hormones dictate our mood, our behavior, our personality, our focus, our vitality, and our overall health. Um, our hormones are our weakest link. So hormonal health is one of the most important things for not just human beings, for any animal species. Right. So depending on your hormones, it will depend on your survival and on your ability to reproduce. Okay. So and again, I'm sorry. So if I can tell you, so <laughs> what led me to this is mm -hmm. many times I would see patients who went to their primary doc, got their basic understanding basic blood test and they tell them they're fine but the patient tells me doc i don't feel well i'm not functioning well i have brain fog i'm tired mm -hmm. i'm not the same person i'm tired my energy level is down and this is not just happening to 50 and 60 year old men right happening at 40 and 30 and mm -hmm. the research is very strong about this is that the edcs are causing such havoc on our hormonal health that we see men in their 30s 40s and 50s not being their best whether this is at home at work or anywhere so they are not optimized so when i thought about our conversation when right. you think about um, human error mm -hmm. what can lead to human error is poor biological optimization. Okay. If organism is not at its best, you cannot function at its best. So if you have employees who are responsible for very important tasks in the right. energy industry or any industry in that matter, mm -hmm. and you have a low thyroid, you have low testosterone, you have low blood sugar, any of those things, the person will not be able to maximize their, their role are not going to be as effective as they should be. Mm -hmm. And actually, there is a very easy way to identify that problem and correct it. So my motto, once we started talking, was biological optimization for wow. peak performance to reduce human error. At peak performance, no matter your age, if you have good mm -hmm. hormonal health, you're going to decrease human error. It's important. So, so let's talk more about this optimization and maybe some examples. You know, I, I myself am your patient, so so we would definitely dive into that because it's for me it was a great story to share. I think really so, definitely. And I think you've given me permission to talk about you, absolutely, you know, your health status here. And we're not going to go into detail, but remember, you came to me mm -hmm. um, where you had problems with your thyroid, right. which again you had no family history of thyroid. Right. No, no. ECBs that's very prominent in your industry has been shown to affect thyroid significantly. So I don't know if you develop thyroid disease because mm -hmm. at some point during your work, you were exposed to PCB, but you ended up with thyroid um, right. insufficiency. Right. And your wife will tell you, once your thyroid is not the right way, you are not <laughs> the same person. So imagine at work. So yeah. I was able to balance your hormonal, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your thyroid, and you felt much better. Right. But to go even deeper, and this is what a lot of doctors are not really aware of right, right now, testosterone replacement, testosterone right. therapy, testosterone for both men and women, right. but specifically more for men, is the most important to help you with your focus, to help you with your drive, to help you with your ability to deal with stress and with complex tasks. So when you have a younger man who, de who develop low testosterone or insufficient testosterone, mm -hmm. their, their work is definitely going to suffer. So again, your example, you came to me once your thyroid levels were normalized, right. you still weren't at your best. Right. We check your hormones, you see that your testosterone levels weren't optimized. And right. the big misconception that people tend to have about testosterone is that first, only older men need it. Right. Second, if it's a young man who needs it, it's either for muscles or for better sex. Right. It is way beyond this. Right. Testosterone is really important for brain function. Mm -hmm. So brain fog that we develop, um, low testosterone is associated with it, low energy, needing a nap in the afternoon, not being able to keep up, low motivation. Those are all symptoms of low testosterone. Dragging in the mornings too, dragging, dragging badly in the mornings. That's another symptom that I myself you know, would, 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 would experience. Yeah. So. And now I'm sure we're talking about this. There's a lot of people saying, hmm, so mm -hmm. maybe it's not normal that I feel like this. <laughs> so for me, I say age is only a number. Your right. hormonal health determine mm -hmm. your functional status. I have patients who are 60, 70, and thriving once their hormones are there. Right. So, and again, talking specifically about your industry, 
that PCB, the PCB has been even, um, it's defined as a persistent organic pollutant. So right. although it's been banned, I think maybe 20 years ago, 20 years, it's still it's out persistent. There. you can't get rid of it. So yeah. there's been contaminated sites that if you're still in that area, it's going to get right. to you. And what's important, they bend it mostly because of its carcinogenic uh, potential. Right. Think about right. cancers, they never talked really about PCB as an endocrine disruptor. Yes, when we talk cancer, it's 20 years, 30 years down the road. It's a small percentage of patients. Most people say, ah, oh, cancer will not happen to me. But when your hormonal health happens to you, more, it's more it's insidious. Serious. It's more insidious, but mm -hmm. also life changing, life altering. And that also happens over a longer period of time. So, so the effects of that, of course, you know, it, it, it's a good portion of your lifetime, a career, career, your personal life, and a lot of other things are, are affected by, by this particular. Uh, so EDC, it's endocrine disruptor. Endocrine disrupting chemicals or endocrine yeah. disruptors. And that includes all kinds of different chemicals like plasticizers, mm -hmm. BPA, phthalates, um, pesticides like atrazine, glyphosate, anything. So we, the way we get in contact with EDCs, mm -hmm. we either breathe them, they are in dust particles all around us, right. or we put it on our skin. All of the skincare oh, products right. have a lot of this. Um, we eat them, all the plastics in our food, all the antibiotics that we raise our, our cattle that we put on our vegetables. Mm -hmm. All this has an effect on our health and Very that cool. effect on our health decreases optimization and to speak particularly about your industry decreasing biological optimization leads to human error human so i've been mostly in the space of personal wellness so if i've always been how do i optimize my patient's life for them to feel better physically mentally and emotionally but what we've been talking about guillermo has such much such such a bigger crowd because right, I'm right. thinking that corporate wellness needs to start paying attention to this. Absolutely. Because yeah. one thing we talked about is the aging workforce. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of amazing brains, amazing people that right, maybe when they get to their 50, 55, early 60s, right. if their thyroids are not balanced, if their testosterone mm -hmm. levels are not balanced, they may not feel that they can still perform at their highest level. Absolutely. So yeah. when they're like this, you know what? Early retirement is a better option. Right. Um, exactly. I have a patient who's a perfect example. He was mm -hmm. a CEO of a company. He was in his late fifties and he told me he couldn't keep up with the young guys coming up anymore. Once we did his hormonal um, evaluation, we saw his testosterone level was low. Once we put right. him into our program, and again, our program, it's not just testosterone. We optimize nutrition. Right. We talk about exercise. Mm -hmm. We even talk about mindset. We talk about sleep. And sleep. as the last resort, we optimize hormones. But once we put all this together, this mm -hmm. 8 year old CEO was like, I feel like I'm 30 again. Wow. He put all of his high executives into our program and his sales tripled. And wow. now he said, I don't want to retire. I'm at the peak of my life. So in, your, in yeah. your industry that I know there's a lot of early age retirement. Yes. Um, yes. Again, if you can do this financially, you can great, but people should not retire because they feel like they cannot keep up with the work. Right. Exactly. If that happens, this is where corporate wellness needs to take a look at this. And when I say corporate wellness, I like to, I, we, we talked about that similarity, corporate mm -hmm. wellness will understand that. How do you determine if you need something like this? Right. So if you're a project manager, Guillermo, and mm -hmm. I bring a project to you, what are you going to do? First thing, quality assessment. Right. We need numbers, but not just basic numbers. You need the whole oh. gamut of your hormonal right. health. Unfortunately, you've got your typical annual uh, primary care visit. You don't get right. it. So right. corporate wellness, it should include all of the vitamins and hormones that are necessary for biological optimization. Once you do that assessment and you see there's any deficiencies anywhere, as the project manager of your own health, what do you do? Quality improvement. Quality improvement. Why? So you, you, you have to find the right provider, put you on the right program, and mm -hmm. you, do, you do CQI, continuous quality improvement and quality assessment. By doing this, you can really ensure that your employees, um, any individual has that biological optimization where they can really feel their best. By mm -hmm. feeling their best, you'll have a better employee, right. better returns, less human error.
Absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and that is the human error uh, to a certain point, right? But but it, it is far more reaching, right? Because really, because one of the things we're experiencing is one aspect is, you know, industrial hygiene, which is part of that is, is it, it involves a human aspect of it as well. The other one is, you know, which of course is, is error prevention, error reduction. But another aspect that we're looking at, and I am in the training business, right? So we're noticing that the, these these uh, senior leadership employees are, are just, they may not have the energy to help pass on knowledge. So now not only are they retiring, but they just don't have the time, energy, or bandwidth to also train this new workforce. So so th- this whole talent drain, which is what we're calling it, right, uh, is, 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 is greatly impacted by this early retirement situation where, you know what, we're, we're all very blessed to have really good retirement plans in this industry, but at the same time, you know, if we could do something to just kind of extend that career longevity a little longer. Uh, they they feel great. They're not going to want to retire, and 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 that's one of the things. Beyond that, it's also training the next generation of of whether they're industry professionals or even other industries. So that's one thing that's important, right? And and so, what is your take on that? You're completely right. But where it starts, the individual has to be optimized. Right. He has to feel his best. I'm 52. I embody my philosophy. I feel like I'm 35. Mentally, physically, I have more motivation. I have more ambition. I have zest for life. So one of the big symptoms of low testosterone as we get older, mm-hmm. midlife crisis. What is midlife crisis? Mm-hmm. You feel blah. You feel... Right. Like life is just, you know, nothing really interests you. A lot of guys will tell you this. They don't get pleasure into things anymore. A lot of guys, um, work has become what they want to do, but they don't get pleasure in it anymore because first, they can't perform as well. Second, they don't have the mental capacity, brain fog. And third, a lot of times the mood goes down, depression. Maldepression is a huge symptom of hormonal imbalance. That's for men and women. Once you balance the hormone, like I was saying, hormones determine our mood and our behavior. So Mm -hmm. once your hormones are balanced, it's one patient said it to me, and I love the way they said it. They said, I wasn't depressed, but it's almost like I was living in a world where all the lights were dimmed. Wow. Once my hormones were balanced, it's like everything got put on high. Everything seems bright. Everything is shiny. I wake up with a pep in my step. I have zest for life. When you have this, you don't want to just go play golf. Right. You want to pass on information. You right. want to travel. You want to enjoy life. And that's what I want for all my patients. And that's what every individual deserves. Mm-hmm. We deserve to be happy. We deserve to really live a full life. It should not be that at a certain age, there's an expiration date and you should just go sit down somewhere, watch the sunset and go away. Mm -hmm. So hormonal health, balance, um, hormonal balance equals personal optimization equals better results everywhere. At home, at the gym, Mm -hmm. at work, and in the corporate world. Of course. So speaking of corporate world, it's the next point. How do we... How do, how, do we, how do we get the, this industry and other industries, whether it's manufacturing or it's really it applies to any industry with an aging workforce, right? How do we get, I mean, the only way to prove it is that this improves your bottom line, ultimately. I mean, I mean that's one of the benefits. Main- so one thing I've learned as a physician is, yes, health is important, but for corporate, bottom line is the most important. Right. But better, healthy employees equals a better bottom line, no right. questions. So I had, I had another guy who was a, a realtor and he came to me, he was only 40 years old and he had his testosterone to, 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 um, at the lower level of limit with all the symptoms of low T. And he was telling me, he's like, doc, I have all this work, but sometimes I just want to go home, close my door, watch TV and just not be bothered. Once I optimize the hormone, he fixed his nutrition. Mm-hmm. Same thing. He told me he, last year, he tripled, he went to, to the million plus into wow. sales. This is amazing. And, you know, yes, money is important, but why was he able to do this? Because he was a better person. Right. So one of my model, one of my, I love to say that, feel your best so you can be your best. Okay. When you don't feel good, when you have kind of low mood, um, you know, you feel low energy, you have aches and pains, all of those symptoms are symptoms of aging or symptoms of hormonal insufficiency, you can't be at your best. So, and being your best as an individual translate into being your best as a corporate entity. Yeah. 
So the main thing that that corporate entity needs to do is having awareness about this. Right. A, a basic primary care evaluation should not be enough. Um, one other example: Firefighters Association. Right. Also, that's a that's a industry that's very very. Um, highly exposed to toxins. Mm -hmm. And IAFF, International Association of Firefighters, endorses testosterone replacement because they've noticed that 25% of their workforce is on some kind of testosterone replacement. Why? And that's uh, independent of age. And 25%, those are the people that admitted that they were on testosterone. Right, right. Not so. more who do it in the black market because they, there's a lot of stigma associated with right. it. So the IFF put out a statement to say, if you have those symptoms, make sure you get your numbers checked, including your testosterone level. Wow. And if, if low, make sure you replace it. Of course, the important thing, you need to find the right provider who mm -hmm. has the right experience, who really understands this. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of my patients would have gone to an endocrinologist or a urologist should be very conservative uh, mm -hmm. for I'm going to give you the example. Normal testosterone level is 300 to 1200. So it's a number. Okay. Endocrinology cannot be defined by numbers. So I have patients who come to me, they're maybe 350, 380. Their doctors tell them it's good. That's good enough. You know, you know <laughs> what I say, that's a C minus. If I were to give you a paper, grade. Right. I right. want A plus for all of my patients, regardless of your age, mm -hmm. hormonal status, dictates your functional status. So okay. once I put my patients from the lower limit, maybe 350, 380, to the upper limit of normal, maybe 800 to 1,000, they thrive. They are completely right, right. different people. So this is where you see, yes, we focus on the person, the individual that makes him a better member of his family, a better member of his community, and a better worker. Right, of course. So, so on this note, right, where, where it comes to finding the right provider, I think one of the challenges that, we're, that a patient's going to face, or even, even uh, at a, in a corporate wellness uh, setting, will be um, insurance. So that, that may be something that ends up being out of pocket for now, but uh, there, there is a push to have this uh, somewhere normalized to the point that the insurance will be covering it, given the fact that it's going to impact the bottom line. Would you tell us more about that? Definitely. So insurance will cover your testosterone if you're less than 300 repeatedly. No. And unfortunately, once you show that you get higher, they may deny coverage. So ins insurance is still kind of iffy. But mm -hmm. if you have good insurance, if you have it covered, great. But unfortunately, majority of functional medicine evaluation may not be covered by insurance. But I'm going to tell you, um, it used to be only for rich people to go into right. hormonal treatment. The prices have decreased significantly, and what you may pay in upfront cost, you will save it on the back back office. Oh, because me. you will have a happier, healthier yeah. workforce that is going to be much more productive. So again, me, I'm more on the personal level where I say I say to people, health is our biggest asset, and health right. has become a luxury. You can no longer just rely just on your insurance. You right. need to invest in yourself. You need mm -hmm. to really dig deep, go into anything, leverage technology, leverage all the new knowledge that we have to really feel your best, be at your best, and be optimized. We need awareness and we need education. Education um, is a thing. So, so, so the next action plan really, is, uh, as far as what, what we could do, I mean, besides finding the right provider for example if if one of our viewers for example is interested in pursuing this they can of course uh do maybe an online consult with you or or maybe get a referral for for a specialist in their particular area so what would you recommend they do so the first thing is everybody needs to really do a, a, re, a good self-assessment okay how are you doing in life how are you feeling how's your energy level How's your cognition? How's your mental focus? How's your enjoyment of life? Right. Rate yourself from one to 10. And you can go online and you look at low, low testosterone um, um, questionnaire and they have mm -hmm. all of those questions. And if you see that you, you're, not, you, you're scoring maybe a five or a four in many of those areas, the second thing is talk to your primary care provider. Mm -hmm. Have them run the test. Um, if you see that they are not really into that type of medicine, start doing your research. 
our website, www.medicalhealthinstitute, has a lot of information. Okay. We even have one, how to vet your physician to see if he can really understand functional medicine. And if you cannot find one in your area, you can always go. I recommend the Institute of Functional Medicine, IFM. There's also another company, um, not a company, an organization, uh, A4M, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Okay. And they'll list physicians that are proficient in functional medicine. So um, our clinic is booming. Now we've been lucky because of COVID. We can do telehealth consultation. Mm -hmm. So I do telehealth consultation in most states. Um, I think it's here to stay. Uh, right. But, you know, I'm only one. There's a lot of providers who can do this, but make sure you find the right person. Right person this is right. something that you have to really see. Is this person really looking to make me be my best? Or are they just helping me not be sick? That is not right. good right. enough. Right. And, and that and that is an important point because um, in, in, in my previous employer, I was in a rather large corporate setting. It was, and, and they had a really nice wellness center. They even had a dental clinic. So ideally, it was really to keep you in the office, you know. But 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 they also provide you the you know the, the benefit of, of having that convenience there, right? So so they they were usually at the forefront of of engaging in, in employee wellness. Um, and I, I think as, as more as, as more and more corporate, larger corporate settings have that service available, it's more likely that we're going to see this this type of, of care being more uh, more uh, accepted, normalized, or and available sought after, right? And available also and available, because now right? exactly yeah. what we see. Some, some people may feel that they have this and they don't know who to turn to. They go to their regular right. doctors, they get bounced from one doctor to the other, then they're like, ah, forget it. Right. So really, this is really something that uh, my mission, I'm trying to do a lot of podcasts. I'm writing a book on this subject. Okay. My mission is to empower each and every individual, men and women, to take a look at yourself. And if you don't feel that you're at your best, what <laughs> can you do to do better? First, of course, you optimize your nutrition. Right. Second, you start moving more. Right. Third, you make sure you sleep enough. Right. Fourth, you work on your mindset and then make sure your hormones are well balanced and find the right person who's going to be in your corner, who really knows, understands this. Again, I embody my philosophy. Mm -hmm. I don't just talk about it. I walk Right, you live it. You That's live really it. Really important for me. So I want all of my patients. I'm building a tribe, and you're part of my tribe. I am. <laughs> We're going to be 80 years old. We're going to be thriving, working, doing whatever we want. Absolutely. If we want to retire, we will, but not because our mental capacity because is no them. longer there. Absolutely. And I can definitely tell you that the, the investment really, really pays off. Because for me, it really, really has personally, but professionally, and 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 in many other ways. So. And if I haven't said it before, I'm very grateful for all the help and advice and guidance you've given me on, on this journey because it really has made a, an enormous difference in my life. So, so once again, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to tell you, that's my passion. Yeah. Um, I still do my regular internal medicine, but my passion mm -hmm. is to bring awareness to this subject and really open it up to more conversation. I want more universities, more insurance to cover this. The more we talk about it, the more we shine the light over it, right. the more we empower patients to just say, you know what, if your physician tell you you're fine and you don't feel like you're fine, keep doing your research, yeah, keep research. talking to people, interview different doctors, listen to different podcasts educate yourself empower yourself you deserve to feel your best as an individual and as a corporate entity you want to have an absolutely. optimized worker because that's going to be better for your bottom line absolutely absolutely well and you know what that that i couldn't agree with you more and i look forward to having you again on the show by the way because this is definitely a topic that we can expand further on especially when it comes to workforce safety and industrial hygiene for sure and definitely in this industry, in the energy industry and many others. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today, but man, we really covered everything it's we've got awesome. to cover. <laughs> Amazing. So um, I definitely, once again, thank you for being in the show and thank you for being my guest. It's, it's, it's always great uh, to have people like yourself here. It's even better when, you know, we're also friends. So it becomes a lot of fun. So Rudy, um, thank you. talk to you again soon and we'll have you on the show again. And uh, Look forward to hearing more about this particular branch of medicine that you're definitely really good at. So.
Right. I Thank appreciate you. it. And Aloha. I love Hawaii. I went to Hawaii and I had an amazing time. What an amazing place. So this was an honor for me. Me and you, we know we connect so well. We're going to really try to keep bringing information about this. Thank you so much, Rudy. And thank you again, Think Tech Hawaii, for giving us the venue to do this. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.